as far as the reason that I love teaching is I am, or teaching this subject specifically, I am a clinical massage therapist. So um, the body is very important to me and the muscles and making sure that we all take care of ourselves is very important. Um, of course, my husband also, also, also often tells me, you know, practice what you preach, but that's a whole different story. Um, I know we all do that. And uh, I am actually now starting, I just started a couple weeks ago, um, a master's of science degree in kinesiology, uh, which is the scientific study of body movement. So that is just obviously a fascination for me. Um, in my other life, my other career is educational sign language interpreting, which is like completely out of left field, um, but it's a passion of mine. I specialize in um, special education settings, so multiple disabilities um, along with the deafness and all of that. So that is me. Um, as far as this course goes, we're gonna go through, um, I'll pull, share my PowerPoint in just a minute. Uh, because I won't be able to see the chat very easily, um, you have a couple of options. If you have any questions, I am perfectly okay with you asking a question while I'm talking or well, interrupting the court class, I should say, um, because it's important that we make sure that you understand correctly the information because in a course like this, if you don't understand what you're doing, you can cause injury to yourself. And I really want to avoid that, okay? So you can either put your name or put comment or question in the chat box, or you can type your actual question in the chat box, that's fine. Um, if for some reason someone misses it, feel free to unmute and say, hang on, I have a question, but let's use that as a last resort. Um, as, I, as Jean said, she's going to be monitoring the chat for me, so I appreciate that, Jean, um, and we'll go from there. So, um, any questions so far? Five, four, three, two, one. All right, let's go. Oh, oh no. If you want, you can, the chat box file option attached to PPT. Oh, okay. Just information about Zoom stuff. All righty. Let's go. Come on. Getting there. All right. The ones that I can see on my screen, give me a thumbs up if you can see my PowerPoint. Fabulous. Okay. <laughs> All right. So this is Stretches for the Everyday Singer. Um, we are going to talk a little bit about the structure of a muscle because it's important to understand that for understanding why the safety guidelines are the way they are. So we're going to talk about that. And we're going to talk about the benefits of stretching, because obviously, why do something if you don't know why you're doing it? Um, so we want to make sure that you understand that. We're going to talk about the do's and don'ts of stretching, because that's very important. And then we're going to talk about, or we're going to go through and I'm going to show you some of the stretches that I do um, before I sing. I also just do them with throughout the day. And I tend to go from bottom to top, and we'll talk about why a little later. And then we'll have a formal little Q&A. It'll probably just be a few minutes, um, but that'll be at the end. Okay? All right. So before we get started, uh, before I show you this picture, which I just flashed in front of you, so you kind of got a little preview, um, muscles are like um, bungee cords. Use that analogy. So if anybody's ever cut open a bungee cord, you cut it open, you've got that sheath around it, and then you've got all of these muscle or little rubber fibers inside that make it as strong as it is, okay? If you just had the one rubber band inside, it would probably not be as strong as it was, as it is with the multiples, okay? Um, so the muscle kind of looks like this. Um, wouldn't it be nice to have a guy like that all the time? But anyway, that's totally different. Um, a muscle is a group of tissues bundled together that when contracted produce a force. So this bundle has all of these fibers through it, okay? So it makes it stronger. 
Okay. If you were to stretch a rubber band and you just have the one rubber band and you stretch it and it snaps, that's it. It's snapped. If you have the bungee cord and it's stretching and stretching and one of the fibers inside snaps, it still has strength and it can still doing what it do what it's doing. It may not be as efficient, but it will still do that. So when you're looking at the muscle, it's the same concept. It's got all of these different fibers and you see how it has multiple layers of bundles. Okay. So um, give me a thumbs up if you can see my cursor moving. Okay, perfect. So um, you've got, if you go all the way to the smallest, which is all the way over here on the right, these are obviously microscopic, okay? But you've got these tiny little fibers, these tiny little things inside bundles that bundle together. And then they're bundled together with connective tissue, okay, which is called fascia. Um, but it bundles together like this and it's got blood vessels and nerves and things like that. And then you've got multiples of these muscle fiber cells bundled together in one grouping. They call it a fascicle. You don't have to know that word, I promise. And then on top of that, those are bundled together. So you've got multiple layers of multiple bundles. So this is almost like a redundancy system for us. So if you have one muscle fiber that tears a little bit, okay, all of the other muscle fibers are there and bundled together to support it while it heals up, okay? So that is the general, um, now this is what's called skeletal muscle. So these are specifically the muscles that we use to move our body. So um, cardiac, heart muscles, digestive muscles, or smooth muscles like our esophagus, those are very different. Okay, this I'm just talking about the muscles that are used to move our body parts. Okay. All right. So let's talk about the benefits of stretching. All right. Obviously, we all know that stretching is good because people keep telling us that it's good for us. Okay, but we're going to go a little bit more specific. Stretching reduces the muscle tension. Okay. Um, if you have, think of this, if you have a t-shirt that you've washed and you've put in the dryer and it comes out and it's a little smaller than it was when you put it on the last time, if you stretch those fibers out gently without tearing them gently, they will eventually relax a little bit and allow that stretch. So though it's not exactly like that, it's that kind of concept. You just kind of gently relax. And then we'll talk about how that happens, okay? Stretching increases the range of motion and flexibility in the joints. So I'm gonna put this out there. Our muscles are really stupid, okay? <laughs> um, they're really dumb. If you leave them in a position, like if you leave your arm like this, if you're in a sling for whatever reason, and your arm is in this sling for this, you know, a few weeks, then when you decide to put it down, you're gonna have a hard time straightening your elbow. You're gonna have a hard time doing this because the muscles that were like expanded will stay weaker and these ones will stay tighter. So making sure that you stretch on a regular basis will kind of correct all of those postural things that we're doing throughout the day. And it'll keep that range of motion up. Stretching actually contributes to enhanced muscular coordination. And what that simply means is that it's retraining your body to understand where your muscles are, what they're doing. Um, so if you're, you know, doing a stretch like this, it's reminding your body that I can grab this, I can pull it down this way, which is using this muscle and this muscle. So it's almost like it's practicing the different nerve the neural pathways, basically the ways that our brain tells our body what to do, okay? So it helps you to remember that coordination. It helps your body to remember those coordinations, especially for a lot of us who just sit at a computer for a long time. Um, I sit at my desk for probably right now about six, seven hours a day, completely forgetting about everything else. And then I get up and I'm like, okay, give me a second. I need to remember how to walk. 
So making sure you get up and stretch and move your body is going to help remember and ingrain that coordination. Um, it also increases the circulation of blood to certain parts of the body, uh, specifically whichever part you're stretching, but also whatever parts are being engaged to help balance that stretch. So one of the ways that muscle tension happens is your muscle fibers will get all tight, okay? Um, and then what happens is that you can't get blood, th blood flow through there. Okay, so a knot is actually a tangle of muscles, muscle fibers that don't have any blood flow to it. So one of the things that you can do is by slowly stretching it, it one starts to untangle it, but it also forces blood into that area, which can force the untangling. Okay. All right, and of course, because of the extra circulation and oxygenation, more oxygen in the blood, it increases your energy levels. Um, I know when I spend an excess amount of time outside, um, or excess, more time than I usually spend outside, I tend to be very energetic while I'm outside. Of course, I get inside and then I crash. But the reason for us being more energetic when we're outside, like at the beach or at the park with kids or whatever, is that we have more oxygen available to us because we're outside. We tend to be around green areas, which of course expel the oxygen. Um, and we have less chance of just sitting there breathing the same air, circulated air in the house. Not that it's, you know, bad necessarily, just less fresh oxygen that helps. Before I move on, are there any questions? No? Okay. Well, this is a very understanding group. I love it. Um, all right. So stretching rules. As I said, there are some very important rules to follow when you're stretching uh, because you want to make sure that you don't do anything that will hurt yourself or injure yourself. And those are different. Um, you want to stretch before and after singing, obviously, especially before, but also after. Um, the reason for this is the same reason that when you do exercises, workouts, um, athletes would do this. Um, you want to warm up your muscles beforehand, but you also want to make sure that any of the um, lactic acid, any of the toxins that you release during your workout, are stretched out of that. So that increased blood flow when you are stretching actually helps your blood to flush your body of any toxins or lactic acid or anything like that. So if you've ever done a workout that like you just decided, eh, I'm going to go, I don't know, lift weights for whatever reason, you just go lift a bunch of weights, you know, a bunch of, um, bicep curls and the next day your arms are like jello because you didn't stretch before and warm up the muscles. You didn't stretch afterwards to flush the toxins. So your muscles are going, ah, I hate you. Okay. And that's basically it. So that's the reason you want to stretch before and after. Now, I understand that singing is not as strenuous as maybe running a marathon or lifting weights or anything like that. However, the big difference is that when you're doing all those exercises and everything, you're dealing with larger muscles. So they take a little bit more abuse than smaller muscles. In here, we are talking about itty bitty, teeny weeny muscles. Okay. So it does not take long for them to feel abuse, feel sore, or actually cause damage, okay? Which is why you want to make sure that you take super care of this. All right. When you stretch, you want to make sure to hold stretches for at least 20 to 30 seconds in each position, okay? The reason for this is that when you first put your muscles into a stretch, 
they need a second to be like, oh, oh, that we're doing this. Oh, okay. All right. So it takes about 15 to 20 seconds for them to really understand that they're stretching. And then you want to hold that stretch to allow the blood flow to go in. Any longer, and it doesn't really have an any extra benefit. So you can hold it longer, but there isn't necessarily extra benefit to do so. So 20 to 30 seconds seems to be the best time frame. You wanna make sure to spend extra attention to areas that you are chronically tense. So for me, between the shoulder blades is an issue for me. I have shoulder blades and right up here where I get those knots, okay? And that's mostly from my years of sitting over a desk like this. <laughs> but also as a massage therapist, my arms are in front of me. And as an interpreter, my arms are in front of me. So everything gets right over here. So you just wanna make sure that you're paying attention to those chronic areas, okay? And that may mean just repeating a stretch once or twice. If you have areas of poor posture, like me for my shoulders, or you sit at a desk for a long time, you want to make sure that you stretch those areas regularly, okay? Um, and what you want to do is not stretch the area. So, for example, if I'm hunched over, I don't know if you guys can see me, but I'm going anyway. If I'm hunched over forward um, to be at the desk, you want to make sure that you're not stretching the back. I mean, you want to stretch the back a little bit, but you need to stretch the front so it rebalances your posture, okay? Always breathe normally or even deeper if possible while you are stretching. Again, with all of the excess oxygen going, to the, going through the bloodstream, it's going to help you to prevent any injuries. All right. Um, is that the don't? Okay. All right, um, the other thing that I wanted to point out here at this point is one of the best things that you can do uh, when you are starting a stretching plan, just as if you are st starting any kind of exercise plan, is to check with a professional. Um, I'm giving you some suggestions and I'm making sure that you know these rules, but if you're gonna start something that is like, I'm gonna do this, plan and then I'm going to go do cardio and then I'm going to go blah 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 or if you have any areas of concern you want to make sure to check with a professional the easiest place to go for something like this would be a physical therapist um that would be the easiest way and just go in and say you know what I'd like to start doing more stretching and um maybe strength you know muscle strength coordination work or something like that and they're they'd be happy to help you out to build a plan so just putting that out there. All right, a couple of things that you wanna make sure you never do or avoid at all costs when you are stretching. You never wanna stretch until the point that it hurts. If you get into a stretch position, say for example, it doesn't hurt when I do this and I'm putting over my head, but if I pull it a little further, it kills me, okay? You wanna make sure that you never put it as far or do stretch as far as it hurting because that means that it's actually pulling and causing some damage to those fibers. So you wanna make sure that it just stretches, you can feel the stretch and maybe just a slight overstretch, but if it hurts, make sure to back it off a little bit, okay? Never stretch in a rapid motion. So think about that rubber band again. If you've got a rubber band that's been in a position, say around a book for a while, and you just go and, and pull it, what's it gonna do? it's gonna snap in a heartbeat, okay? Obviously our muscles aren't gonna do that because they're not that, they're not that rigid, um, but that, it's the same kind of concept. Because we've got so many tiny, tiny microscopic fibers, we wanna make sure that we don't stretch them too quickly and cause them pain. And the other part of this is that we have little receptors in our tendons and in our muscles that automatically tense a muscle when it gets pulled really fast. So that's the reason that when you turn your ankle, when you um, twist your ankle, your muscles, your body's actually tightening those muscles to try and make sure that you don't dislocate or break a, a bone, okay? So the muscles automatically tighten if you move too quickly in those, in those. so it's counterproductive. 
Okay. For a similar reason, you never want to bounce your stretch. I know I think during the calisthenics or no, the, no, the, um, shoot, I can't remember the word back in the like eighties and nineties, there was this like super big movement of and bounce and bounce when you're in that stretch, never <laughs> or, and up and down, you know, I'm just, you know, picturing all of these in the really bright colors with those little steps and the, <laughs> but they would have you get into this stretch and then bounce it and bounce it. And though it may be okay, as far as like using similar motions for aerobics, that's the word I wanted, um, similar movements for muscle strength, you want to make sure that you're not actually stretching those muscles when you do that. Um, because again, it's putting it into a fast motion and it's going to tighten and tighten and tighten. And that's just really bad for your muscles. Okay. Um, and it can actually, because you're moving quickly, it could put you past that point of hurting without you even realizing it. And then it would cause, cause some damage to the muscles. Um, in case you are looking at stuff online, the bounce concept is also called ballistic stretching. Ballistic like buns, ballistics, ballistic stretching. So in case you're looking for something and something gives you a ballistic stretch, stretch pattern, don't do it. It's a bad idea. Um, if your muscles are injured or like you've pulled something or say your post-exercise um, but it's worse than just like the next day soreness. Try not to stretch them. If you do, do it very slowly, like extra slowly. Um, be very careful of how it feels because you want to make sure that if you've start, if you've torn a few fibers, you don't want to tear more of them. Okay. And always seek professional help if you have more pain than you think you should. All right. Going back to making sure that you breathe while you are stretching, make sure you don't hold your breath, <laughs> okay? Um, and again, because you want to make sure that you are not building up those toxins. You want to keep the flow of oxygen through the bloodstream going to those muscles. All right, finally, this may seem counterintuitive, and I'm going to say don't stretch first thing in the morning. What I mean by that is don't do a stretching routine. Obviously, you can get up and be like, oh, yeah, okay, that's fine. <laughs> Just don't get up and do one of these, like, bottom-to-top stretching routines. Um, and the reason for that is because, have you ever noticed that when you wake up in the morning, you're a little taller than you were when you went to bed? The reason for that is that while you are sleeping, your spine is re-expanding those discs, with spinal fluid and whatever you've put into your body as far as fluids for the day. So you wanna make sure that when you stand, if we first stand up and you start this stretching routine, it's gonna be almost like sitting on an overinflated balloon and you're like, and you're, so your discs are kind of like, I'm not sure what I'm doing. Okay, so you wanna make sure that you give it a chance to just kind of relax get back into a settled position. So usually about a half hour, 45 minutes of being vertical, moving around a little bit, should be fine before you go back into doing a stretching or exercise routine. This goes for exercise as well, as far as doing it first thing in the morning. You wanna give yourself some time for your spine and your muscles to realign to being vertical. Okay, before I move on, are there any questions, concerns, comments? We do have a question. Okay. What causes your muscle to cramp? Um, it depends on the reason for the cramp. So in general, it's usually meaning that there is something missing in the nutrients in your bloodstream. So obviously there are some who have disorders that, uh, if it's a muscular disorder, it's completely different. So somebody who just has random cramps or even night cramps, um, it could be a few different things. It's usually due to either um, over-exercising, so a lot of um, athletes who do like a marathon or whatever will run into that issue where they'll start cramping right afterwards. 
Um, but it's usually due to some kind of imbalance in the nutrients like either potassium or magnesium or just dehydration. So depending on your body, you might be more susceptible to dehydration or more sensitive. So you could even just be the slightest bit dehydrated and your muscles start cramping. It could also be um, not enough salt or too much salt in your diet. So it's really usually some kind of metabolic imbalance. So I saw a bunch of pop-ups. Do we have, do we have any more questions or comments? I'll read them. Okay. Um, so Tracy wants you to know that you're explaining everything so clearly and she wants to thank you. Well, thank you. Kathy wants to know, is it bad to sleep with pillows under your head? Can discs get fluid they need that way? Yes. Uh, sorry, let me rephrase that. No. And yes, <laughs> no, it's not bad to sleep with a pillow under your head. Um, always want to make sure that you keep it in some kind of um, natural, more natural position. Now I'm a side sleeper 90% of the time. My husband says I'm a burrito sleeper because I tend to steal the blankets and wrap myself in them, but that's, you know, but I tend to be a side sleeper on one side or the other. It doesn't really matter. So as long as you are not, say, for example, sleeping like this, you should still be okay. <laughs> Basically, you want to make sure that you are in some kind of comfortable position where you are not causing strain to the muscles, but nothing that, no position that you put yourself in while you are sleeping, other than severing your spinal cord, will stop the fluids from going to the spinal cord. Yeah. All right. Thank you. No problem. Patricia wants to know, would you recommend a full body stretch before getting out of bed? Um, before getting out of bed is okay. Um, I wouldn't say do the, do the routine, like a routine bottom to top stretching, like just kind of stretching out your legs, stretching out your arms. That's perfectly okay. Um, the main, the, because your body's in that position and it's okay to do what it needs to do. The reason you don't want to just get right up and do something is because it's going to cause kind of weird balance issues. So. All right. That's all the questions we have so far. Marvelous. Okay. So let's talk about stretches and stretching routines. You're going to find when you decide what stretches work for you, um, which way you want to do it. I tend to stretch from the bottom to the top. Okay. And the reason for that is if, a lot of times the positions that you need or the things that you need to do to help you stretch the bottom will tense up the top. So if you start from the bottom and you're not working out or relaxing the top and then stressing it out again. And I say that because if you have to lift one leg, a lot of times you have to hold on to something. Some people do, some people don't, but you want to make sure that you are doing things that help. So I tend to stretch from bottom to top. Okay. Um, all right. So another question. Oh, yep. Oh, not a question. I echo what Tracy said. Oh. Barbara wants you to, to know that this is a great presentation and easy to understand. Well, thank you. I'm glad. All right. So, oops, wrong button. That way. All right. So I plan to have videos for these, but I couldn't really find any that were good enough. And, um, whenever I had the time to do it, I didn't have somebody to hold the camera for me. So. <laughs> So we're going to use pictures, and if you have any questions, you can, um, you can go ahead and ask those. So I tend to start with this one. One of the reasons that I use the outer shin or ankle stretch is because it's a side of the muscle that we don't usually pay attention to. Um, so I tend to start with this one because it's really gentle, and you can hold on to something instead of putting your hands on your hips like this guy is. But it's basically... And you can do it while sitting too. I mean, even sitting right now, if you bring your foot back kind of under you and put it against the floor, you're going to feel that stretch just on the outside. So you've got your leg here just on the outside front. So that's one of the stretches that I like to do. I tend to do it sitting um, just because, like I said, I spend hours and hours a day sitting. So that's one of the ones that I do. 
um, because that is one of the stabilizer muscles for how you stand as far as the angle of your ankles versus your knees versus your hips. Okay, um, did I see a question pop up? Yeah, we got a question. Are you sending this information to us by email? And I think the answer is yes. Posted on the Harmony Inc. website in the Hive section. Right. Yes, wherever the handouts end up, because the handouts are basically the slides. Yep, so they so. will be um, in the members only section of Harmony Inc. website. Yep. Okay, awesome. All right, the typical calf stretch. I know we've all done versions of this. I tend to like going like this picture, standing straight near a step or a wall and being able to have an extra stretch on it. So putting your foot up against the wall and then kind of leaning into the wall so that it stretches those muscles, okay? So as it says here, stand up straight, place your toes on the step or the wall, keeping that leg straight, lean forward. Whatever you do with the back leg you, is, is up to you, but you can even get a slight stretch on that back leg if you keep both of them relatively straight. Now. I'm going to put a caveat here. When I say straight, I don't mean knees locked. Okay. Um, I think most of us have heard this when we're on the risers with choruses, you never lock your knees. And the reason for that is that we've got blood vessels behind the knees that if you lock your knee, it pushes pressure, puts pressure on them and eventually you can actually pass out. That's a bad idea. Or fall over because you lose feeling in your feet terrible idea. I do not recommend it. Okay. The next one is the hamstring stretch. And like I said, for the last one, there are variations of this one. So the one I have here is pretty simple. You stand up straight, you put one leg up onto an object like a chair or a bench or something like that. You keep that leg straight and your toes pointed upright and then you lean forward, keeping your back straight, trying to touch your toes. Um, so the variations on this, if you are unable to do this piece without, you know, difficulty, um, you can be sitting on, the, sitting on the ground with your legs out and just lean forward and try and, and touch your toes. Um, if you want to just work on one leg, you keep one leg bent while you lean forward to touch your other leg's toes. That sounds really weird. Uh, <laughs> really clear, right? So there are different variations. Basically the idea is when you are stretching your hamstrings or the back of your legs, back of your thigh, you wanna make sure that you keep that leg straight and your toes pointed. So you can do this too if you're lying on your back and you have a towel or something, you put it around your foot and then you can lift it up that way um, if you're lying on your back. So those are all the different variations that you can do. Like I said, you just wanna make sure you're keeping that leg straight and as long as you get that stretch, Fantastic. All right, this is one of the ones that I said you might want to hold on to something. <laughs> um, this And this is something that you don't necessarily have to do all the way up like this woman. One of the things that you should do though, is especially if you sit for long periods of time, is at least stand up and do this a little bit. So it might mean putting putting like a string or something around your ankle and pulling it up this way if you want to. Or theoretically, you can also um, just kneel on something. If you put, your, put that knee that's bent, put that knee on something, keep your leg um, back kind of like at a 90 degree. That, that way. <laughs> so knee, the foot's over here, and you can kind of lean forward and stretch it that way. That would work as well. Um, actually, I'm gonna, sh I'm gonna stand up. Can, you guys can all see me still, right? Kind of, at least in small. Okay, um, I'm gonna stand up and show you one that I use for my chorus actually every week. It's part of our every time stand up and warm up thing. So I'm gonna tilt this down a little bit. Okay. Sorry for my little shorts. All right, <laughs> so. I think we've all done this kind of stretch where we try and stretch the back. But what you can do is when you stand, when you get into this position, let me tilt it down a little further. Okay. When you get into this position, 
what you can do is stand up straight and tilt your pelvis this way, okay? So it's like you're doing a thrust. Bend both knees and then you'll feel that stretch right on the front here. And that's one of the muscles that gets really tight when you're sitting for a long period of time. So this one whoo, stretches both the calf and this muscle, or the, sorry, the thigh. But doing this will at least get you this piece, which will help to straighten your pelvis for singing. Okay. So like it says here, whether you do it standing or holding on to something, you could actually do this lying down too. If you lie on one side, you can pull your, pull your leg back and that way you don't have to worry about balance at all. Either way, what you wanna do is when you get your leg back to a stretch, tilt that pelvis or thrust that pelvis forward so that you get the stretch, the extra stretch on that, um, what we call a hip flexor. So it's what brings our, our leg up in front. Okay, any questions so far on these stretches? So that would be, let's go back. We've got the shin one, the calf one, the hamstring one, and the quads one. Questions, concerns, comments? Okay, moving on. All right, oh, so this one was the other one that I forgot about this one. Um, so this is another variation. If you don't wanna deal with balance standing up, you can do this as well. Um, so you kneel on one knee with the other foot in front of you, gently lean forward. So bend the front knee um, and remembering to thrust your pelvis. So as you can see with the muscles that are highlighted in red here, those are the muscles that are being stretched. Okay, so it's the same, it's almost all of the same muscles as when you're doing it standing or lying on your side. Okay. So the side reaching stretch, I know we've all done this one in, at some point in our lives. <laughs> um, what you wanna do is make sure that you're shoulders your sorry your feet are at least shoulder width apart if you need a little extra balance um those of us who are heavier on top may need a little extra balance weight <laughs> okay you can put your knee your your feet a little farther apart and that's perfectly okay um whatever causes you or helps you to not engage too many muscles while you're stretching okay so you want to then slowly bend over to one side Okay, you can either hold on to something, put your hand on your hip, whatever is easiest for you. Um, and then once you're in this position, the best way to stretch all of these muscles, which include the intercostal muscles, by the way, the ones between the ribs, you wanna breathe slowly in and out three times, okay? Now you're not gonna get the full deep breath that you would normally only because you're in a slightly contorted position. So your diaphragm's a little out of place, but you wanna be able to stretch those ribs apart, which will help to stretch those intercostal muscles, okay? Um, and for those who don't know, the intercostal muscles are what expand and collapse the rib cage, okay? Um, so you want to make sure you do that. And then once you've breathed in and out three times, then you slowly come back and then you slowly stretch the other side. So one of the things I didn't talk about earlier and um, when I said you want to make sure that you go into a stretch slowly, you also want to come out of a stretch slowly because think about it again. What happens when you have a rubber band that's stretched and then you let go? <laughs> <laughs> it just kind of goes flying everywhere. So there's no control. So you want to make sure that you are bringing those muscles back controlled. Okay. Um, let me see. I think I got a question. Yes, we do. Do you only do these exercises one time? Um, I do them one time each unless I have an area of tightness. So later on, you're going to see that there's one that stretches the back. So like kind of stretches the between the shoulder blades and, and the back of the neck. 
ow, sorry, I just need my desk. Um, and so I will do, I will go through my routine and then I will do that again. So generally I do these once each, unless it happens to be an area of chronic tension. So and you I hope that that's clear to hold it for 20 to 30 seconds, right? Yes. Hold each one of them for 20 to 30 seconds. Basically, if you are breathing, so in this one, for example, if you're breathing in and out three times slowly, that will be about 20 to 30 seconds, depending on how slowly you breathe. So. Okay. And then again, you want to make sure that you do it on both sides. You wouldn't want to walk around like this all out of balance. That would just be weird. Then again, sometimes I think we, our choreographers think that we can sing like that, but <laughs> that's all, by the way, another reason you want to make sure to stretch because once you add choreography into those, some of those up tunes, who boy, it's like you're running a marathon. All right. This one is a back rotation. Um, so it, it actually stretches the front and the back. So um, you stand with your feet, again, shoulder width apart or whatever is most comfortable for you, never together. Okay, you want them never be, they be together because it actually tightens some of the muscles that we're stretching. Place your hands above your head. Um, oops, that's supposed to say while keeping your back and shoulders straight. If your hands up above your head is too much, you can also just rest them right here. The idea is to be able to make sure that all of this is wide open and stretched while you are doing this, okay? Once you're in that position, whoops, I missed a piece. Um, once you have your hands up in that position, you want to take a deep breath in and then slowly rotate to one side as you exhale, okay? And the reason... Um, the reason or the other thing you want to make sure is that you're not rotating at the knees so that your whole hip is going with you, your whole hips are going with you, because the idea here, as you'll see, as you can see in the picture, is that the idea is to rotate this part here, here let me back up, to rotate this part here and this part here in the back. Okay, so you want to keep your hips still while the upper part rotates. Obviously, your hips are going to turn a little bit, but you want to make sure that you're trying to keep those straight. One of the ways that you can do that as well is to be in a seated position as long as you are seated straight and upright. And so even if you're doing that right now, you can do this here and just rotate from there. So that's the feeling that you want when you are doing this exercise. So your hips won't move very much, but you feel the stretch on the front and the back. Okay. And again, once you get into the, into the rotated position, you want to take a few deep breaths, just like BJ is doing. Great job. <laughs> the yawns too, you know. Um, so take a few deep breaths and then slowly come back to center and then slowly go to the other side and again, slowly back to center. Okay. Again, this is one that you can do seated. Um, most of these you can find a way to do seated. Um, but you want to make sure that whatever you're doing, you are making sure that your spine is straight when you're doing it. Because if it's a skew, you can cause muscle pulls. I like that word, a skew. Very fancy. All right. This is one of my favorites. Um, it may look a little complex, but basically what you want to do is either sit or stand. Sitting, you get a bit more of a stretch or squatting like this. It's a bit more of a stretch than if you're standing. Um, facing a door frame or a wall edge, okay? So something you can grab onto. Um, you want to hold onto that with one, um, with one hand and then lean back away from the door. So you see how those highlighted muscles in red are activated, that's because those are being stretched as she pulls, because it's pulling her arm. So it's pulling her arm away. This is one of my absolute favorites to do when I've been sitting and working at my computer because it helps that part that's been holding me upright for so long to just relax, okay? Again, once you're in this position, this is one of those you wanna breathe in and out slowly, you know, a few times, but again, making sure that you hold it at least 20 seconds, okay? And then you wanna switch sides. 
Okay. Again, you can do this. You can even do this seated, I guess, theoretically, probably the easiest way is in a rolling chair. So you can, you know, gently roll away from the wall. Um, but you want to make sure that you're able to hold on to something. It could even be a pole. I don't know why we would all have poles in our houses to each their own. But anyway, <laughs> something that you can grab onto. Um, I would say not a friend because I love my friends, but you can't always trust their balance. <laughs> okay. Something solid that you can hold on to and pull away from. Okay. All right. This is another one of my favorites. And this is one, again, that if you're sitting at a computer for a long period of time, your arms are in front of you, your pecs, your chest muscles are really shortened positions, okay? So I actually get up probably, I should do it more often, but once every couple of hours and do this stretch. So you just, either you hold on to a door frame, a lot of people call this the door frame stretch. Um, some people will do both at the same time. Um, and just lean forward through a door frame. I don't suggest that only because it's harder for you to control the motion if you're using your body weight to do that. Okay. So what I, I, I always suggest one. So you put your hand, your arm, forearm, whatever, at a right angle to the ground on a door frame or a wall. And then you just turn away from it as you stretch this. So that way you're using your lower body's muscles to be able to maximize this stretch and you're not using your body weight to do that okay once again breathe in and out three times slowly this will also help to extend the stretch since it's stretching your chest and then switch sides this is one, this is another one that i do multiple times so it's usually the back of the neck ones the front of the neck ones which we're going to go over in a few minutes and the chest ones that I do multiple times, usually twice. So I go through the whole routine and then I repeat those three because those are my chronic tension areas. Okay. All right. This is another one of my favorites. It's similar to the next one, which is for the back of the neck. You can do it this way where you stand with your knees bent, cross your arms over, and then grab the back of your knees. If this is harder, what you can do is interlace your fingers, reach forward, and collapse your rib cage inward. And that will also stretch all of those muscles. That's what I tell my chorus is the only time in singing they're ever allowed to collapse their rib cage is when they're doing this stretch. So you stretch forward, collapse inward, and it allows those muscles to stretch. Okay? So this is that back of neck one. So some of us, if you, like if I just do this, I don't really feel a stretch. Okay. Um, one of my favorite people in the world, um, Doc Spilker, I think some of you know him. He's a presentation or sorry, performance category judge, um, is also a chiropractor. So he taught my chorus that if you interlace your fingers and put them on the back of your head and then bring your elbows forward, and then you let your head drop. You don't pull your head, but your arms give it a little extra weight. You feel a little more of a stretch there, okay? Again, you don't wanna, whenever you're using a counterweight or an extra weight, you never wanna pull. So I know some of us do this one and all that. You never wanna pull because there's more chance of, um, more chance of injury. You just wanna use the weight of that limb to help you. Okay. All right, same one we just did, side of neck. You can do this either with your hands at your side or behind your back to get a little extra stretch. If, you're, if you have to be in a seated position, okay, and I'm going this way, I'm not gonna, I know I, my screen is different from yours, so I'm gonna go to my left, I'm gonna grab my chair with my right arm and stretch. If I'm moving my head to my right, I grab with my left arm. So it, it anchors this arm so that I can stretch this more and get more stretch here. Okay. And again, you see a theme of whole of breathing in and out slowly three times. <laughs> 
getting that oxygen flowing. All right. This one, I actually created a video for you right before this class. Um, this is one that I find extremely important. And it's because we do all of this side to side neck stretches, forward neck stretches, back and shoulder stretches, but we ignore the front. Okay. We have especially two very important muscles, really it's the same muscle, but one on each side that stabilize our head, that, though they don't play an important role in the voice itself, the tension from them can translate into everything else. Technical name is sternocleidomastoid or SCM and it attaches from right behind your ear down to collarbone. Collarbone and um, sterno. Okay, sternocleidomastoid. So they go on a diagonal angle this way. So this is what we do. Um, I'm going to explain it to you and then I'm going to show you this video. And I ask you to watch the video and listen to me before you try it because there are some specific things. Um, you place your middle finger and your thumb on your collarbone on either side of your neck. Or as I have to say to my chorus, where your collarbone should be if you're a little thicker. Because my chorus was like, I can't feel my collarbone. Smarty pants. Um, and then you flatten your hand and then you put your other hand on top of it. You slowly let your head drop back and your mouth fall open. So I'm going to play this video. And then I will explain that piece as we go. Oops, there we go. So I'm take, sorry for the brightness. I'm taking the middle finger and the thumb, finding my collarbone. And then once I find those positions, I put my hand flat and my other hand on top of it. And then I let my head drop back. And you want to make sure that your, your mouth falls open because otherwise you're causing tension in your jaw. So I'm going to slowly rotate just a couple of inches. You notice how it's not too far to one side and then slowly to center and then slowly to the other side. So I'm showing what you're gonna do is you're gonna feel the stretch on the back, that corner of your jaw and down to your collarbone. So you're gonna feel the stretch from here to here, okay? So, but the reason that you don't wanna keep your mouth closed is because it's gonna cause tension up here. So your mouth is wide open. It's really pretty when you do this. And again, you just want to bring, as you saw, it's just a couple of inches. You want to bring your neck just slightly over until you feel that stretch and no further. And one of the reasons that you don't want to do further, and I'm going to point this out, never, I'm going to do it just to show you, never do one of these ever. And the reason for that is that the vertebrae are not designed to do that. They're designed to go forward, back, side to side and slight rotations this way. But going around like this can actually cause damage to the bones. Let's not do that, okay? All right, so again, you wanna make sure that you do that. I tend to go back and forth twice. So I go, to, go back, go to one side, then back to center slightly, then to the other side, and then back to center, and then repeat that. Again, you want to make sure that you are allowing the stretch to happen. So it's going to take a little time. Okay. With my chorus, I tend to only do it once in each direction because they all know the stretch. So hopefully they're doing them on their own. But um, you just want to make sure that um, you are allowing those muscles to stretch. And then again, you want to make sure you're breathing, but your mouth is wide open. So hopefully you're not forgetting to breathe. <laughs> all right. Whoops. No, go away. Okay. So we're coming to the end, which is actually relatively good timing. We may go a couple minutes over, sorry, um, for questions and such, but it is our own responsibility to understand what our body needs, which is why I do suggest if you want to get professional advice as far as what's best for your body specifically, I highly encourage it. Um, but it's also our responsibility to make sure that I am ready for singing. We all, our choruses all have different warm-up routines, different physical, different vocal warm-up routines. 
It's our responsibility to make sure that we are prepared for us. I know that I need different warm up exercises than the chorus as a whole. So I do things separately before I go to chorus because I have to or I'm going to hurt myself. So it's our own responsibility to make sure that we are ready, we are physically ready, mentally ready, and emotionally ready, <laughs> and vocally ready to do these things. So we want to make sure that we have everything that we need. Um, and that is the end of the presentation. So bring on the questions, comments, whatever you'd like. <laughs> I'm going to stop sharing.